comparison with history where we've had these instances before and it's good. Exactamente, en 30 años de una mayoría política nueva de ruptura. Gente de ruptura de ruptura. De ruptura significa ruptura con el régimen de You remember the last time we were doing an exercise? Uh, one of the exercises that we did, uh, we're going to start with today again, uh, and that was a free association. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take turns, I'll read a word, and then you just say what comes into your mind. And we're going to start there. Mm -hmm. And I'll start with you. Rabbit. Vegetables. Child. Senior. Building. Cement. Guilt. Retribution. Dinosaur. Green. Suffer. Pain. Europe. Euro? Europe. Coin. Breast. Mother. Beaver. Mm, I'm not sure what's a beaver. Um, let's do another one. Hamster. <laughs> uh, mammal. Lollipop. Child. Spain. Flamingo. Me. Greece. Europe. Continent. Funny. Hilarious. Migrant. Africa. Water. Life. Europe. Borders. Amnesia. Europe. Love. Hurt. Both. Death. Death. Amnesia. Mind. Superman. Villain. Amnesia. Head. You were telling us in some of the last sessions that some of the months, in the past months, the episodes of amnesia have been getting worse. They've been getting more frequent, more severe. And you've given us some information about an apparition of new night episodes. In these night episodes, you're at the beach. It is a beautiful beach. The water is sparkling. You're looking at the sea. You go in, you go swimming. And as you're swimming in this water and enjoying yourself, you see some dolphins. The dolphins come, they're swimming. And pretty soon, you see not just dolphins, but there's something else. There's something in the water. It's not just dolphins, but bodies. There are bodies floating. And behind the bodies, there's bits and pieces of wood. You see it was a boat. You see the name of a boat, Hakima. And then you see it's not just a boat, it's a house. And you start to grab the pieces out of the water. You start to build a house. On the water, it's floating, 
The house falls apart, you build it. It falls apart, you build it. And as you're doing that, out of the water, rising slowly, are bits and pieces of the furniture. Couches, a television, some clothing, personal effects, rising all around you. It's clear you're experiencing anxiety, serious anxiety. So I need to ask you, both of you, why then, in the face of such anxiety, do you persist in striving to stay in Europe? This neurotic. Why make this your home? Is this not a false attachment, a dream? Please. We've seen these images, perhaps in the past, within our continent, within our Europe. It is really sad and really heartbreaking that it is happening today on our borders. This is not um, the Europe or me as Greek, as a European. And this is not my heritage. So I think that not just it's part of my house, but more than that, we can change the situation. Not that it is within my house uh, uh, perfect, but uh, these images have to stop being existent. Well, I think it's not about why to stay, but there is apparently no choice. What we are said is that staying within Europe has certain consequences. Going out of Europe is the, the end of the world, is the worst that can happen. And since we are not aware of what are the consequences of going out, we just feel fear about going out of Europe because of all these devil consequences that they sell us. Mm -hmm. If we would have the mature choice to decide, we will go. Mm. When you think about what Europe has been doing for the last months, last years, what it has imposed on Spain, on Greece, we see that it's been very ineffective. They have starved the economy rather than feeding it, rather than restarting it. And it is a process that is deeply, deeply cruel, that makes people suffer. The symbolism that is used to sustain this is that both countries, Greece, Spain, has behaved like children, lazy, irresponsible. This is what allows Europe to distance itself. This kind of abstraction, this objectification. It distances itself from the suffering that it imposes. It distances itself and it allows it to impose these measures as rational necessities. Does this cruelty by Europe suggest that there is something deeply wrong with Europe? If it can distance itself in such a fashion from what it is doing to the people of Spain and of Greece. I think what we have been uh, experiencing over the last years, over the last few decades, but more intensely now, is a sort of financial nationalism. That people have become so much proud over their private possessions, so much proud of having uh, a home with a, with a garden and their, uh, and their, their two vacations during, uh, during the year, that they have uh, they have uh, almost forgotten their um, 
uh, their humanity. And I think that Europe has been more becoming uh, a part of Aldous Huxley's uh, Brave New World rather than uh, George Orwell's 1984. And yeah, this is... But what, just for one moment, um, what e how is it that if people have a nice home and two vacations, how does the step happen that they don't care about their fellow Europeans? Well, <clears throat> it, has it amazes me as well. And I think that what you mentioned about amnesia, it is, being, is getting even more severe. We've been through wars, we've been through civil wars, we've been through uh, horrible situations, but still, and people don't need to realize that, uh, for example, the Second World War is not, has not been far chronologically, and still we forget what brought us there and how easy it is some, something, uh, something like that to become. Of course, now we have found another way of dealing with it, with overseas intervention. Mm -hmm. And I think this cynical uh, behavior of how we are dealing, let's say, overseas, over, uh, over Europe, over, uh, outside of West, has made uh, has made a, has made the society overall so so cynical so cynical over death and cynical over the product that it's getting from this um, uh, these campaigns. I don't know if mm -hmm. I'm answering. Well, it's difficult because I think we're we're talking about certain kinds of emotions, certain kinds of impacts on people. And the question is if we can use social processes to explain something like cruelty. Because I'm wondering, you know, I mean, what do you think when you hear what Alex says? Well, I think for in relation also to what you mentioned before, about paternalism of Northern Europe to Southern mm -hmm. Europe, I don't agree solely that. I think there is a paternalism from the political class to the citizens. And that applies in Northern Europe and in Southern Europe. And the consequences is that the, the votants, the citizenship, they just believe the message of their parents. And in Northern Europe, this message is Southern Europe hasn't behaved well, they are lazy, they have wasted our money, and now we are asking for it back. And since the citizenship just believes what the political, politics are saying, they just accept the message, and they, when you talk with people, you get this message. You hear sentences like, yeah, but as Dutch people, we cannot accept that they don't pay us back. Mm -hmm. Well, these people never sign a contract with Southern Europe saying we are lending this money. It was their politicians who did these deals, and their banks in agreement with these politicians. And same applies in Southern Europe. We are said that we have lived above our, our opportunities, that we have wasted too much money. Sorry, I don't think I've wasted money. My politicians wasted a lot of money that Europe said. I cannot blame so Northern Europe to be angry with us because we wasted their money, but they shouldn't blame the citizenship. They should blame the politicians that spend it and the banks that are not only South but there are also a lot of northern banks involved in this waste of money and debt creating. Because it's also a strategy to keep all this uh, country within the system they want to keep, of course. And let us not forget how the, the, uh, these leaders were fully aware and in fully cooperation with these governments that, uh, that made mistakes and now they are inept and all that. They, they absolutely knew uh, all uh, what kind of business they are in. Let us not forget all the, the tenders of, uh, of uh, big companies uh, yeah. like Siemens and... But we're moving away from 
um, because I, I, I understand uh, very much what you mean. But if we go into the social analysis, if we go into the economic analysis, it gets away from this other point, which is the deep cruelty. Like, for example, if we have a neighbor, and the neighbor is being abusive right, to another neighbor, to its child, right? because Europe takes on this role of parent. It says, ah, you have been bad children. We're going to correct you. We're going to make you not lazy and responsible like we are. Mm -hmm. But then think about it. What does a responsible parent do? Does a responsible parent starve its child? Does a responsible parent say, it's your own fault that you're getting kicked out of the house? It's your own fault what is happening to you. Um, if Europe, when it takes on this role of parent, is being so deeply cruel, is there not something abusive deeply in Europe? that is different than a social or economic process. Uh, something that allows us to look at the news and imagine somehow that we are not doing this. Unfortunately, that parent is... Excuse me, can I say something? Because I am following this conversation for, for, for a very long time. And I have this information. Uh, uh, the Greeks get a loan 1 billion euros, but they were forced to buy 800 million to, to give to buy German and French tanks. And that was fault of the, Greek go of the Greek government. But to get that loan, they were forced to, to buy this weaponry from the France and the Germany. And that was published very, very little in the two lines. So Greece, Greece get it actually 200 million loan. And that loan, they, they, they couldn't pay it back. I, like you hear, you have this Durva and they, and, they, and, they, and, they, and they get put a, uh, rent on it, rent on it, rent on it. But, you know, I, I, I just don't understand how uh, would you ever uh, kind of this guy of, 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 of be angry with your grandparents? Would you ever say, oh, oh, my grandparents are not important? Because everything what happens, it happened in Greece. We got the Renaissance because of Greece, because Vatican decided, oh, we're going to now uh, market it Bible. And they said Brunelleschi, to the Greeks to measure it, Greek temperance. And Greek, Greece in that time, that's a 1476, they didn't know, they didn't have the cement. And they were locking on the stones to build the, build the templates. Those templates couldn't, couldn't be built bigger than that. But Romans figured it out, cement. And they say, let's build it up bigger. And now, they went into it. They get Brunelleschi. They get uh, Masaccio. And, and they built it up, all Renaissance, upon the Greece experience and the measurement. So how could you say now possibly, oh, throw away the Greeks? This is all knowledge that we have still now. Everything is built on the Greek knowledge. This, this, what are you talking here? It's just kind of like, hello, I don't like my grandparents. I'm sorry. I, I, I just get really emotional with this uh, uh, conversation about the Greek and the, and, the, and, the, and the Greek being so guilty for something. But it's not true. If you read the history, you will really know what we are built on, all our culture. I am, I am, I, I, I am really with you, and I, and I believe that nobody and, and nothing is illegal on this earth. What you went through, it's it's ridiculous. But things happen; that it just happens in life. I'm not sure. 
uh, if you quite follow the question that I was asking, because I think my question is in a way very similar to what you're saying. Because the question is how can Europe do, how can Northern Europe do what it is doing? Um, so you're asking the question in a different register, oh, right? Me? Yes, you say it's history, look at the history. Look at everything Europe has built on the Greek foundation. Yes. Yes. And I say, look at the present. Look at what is happening to the people in Spain. Look at what is happening to the people in Greece. But they gave us so much. Yes, but so, we'll so, come so, back so, in so, the so. discussion. We'll come back in the discussion. Okay. Um, well, I think people, just normal people in the street would agree quite well with that discourse. Mm -hmm. The key thing is that it's not the citizens of Northern Europe who are asking Greece or Spain to become pure, uh, poor and to become starving and to change their laboral conditions to levels of third uh, developing countries. Mm -hmm. No, it's the economical class, the, all the banks, corporations, this structure is the one who is pushing uh, North, South Europe to go to that level. Mm -hmm. When you talk with people in Northern Europe and you tell them what's the new law, the new laboral laws doing in Spain, or how are the conditions of people who demonstrate in Greece, or how people are being evicted of their houses in Europe, in uh, Southern Europe, they cannot believe it. They are not informed of that. And I wouldn't blame these people Mm -hmm. for being the ones who are asking for <coughs> Southern Europe to become poor. I don't agree with that. Yet still, there, there are some of them who are, follow, yeah. who are believing with religious almost faith that yes, the, uh, the Greeks should be scapegoats uh, and uh, they should pay, oh uh, my God, I've been working all my life. This is quite a Calvinistic Protestant, I, I think. Uh, remnant of, of uh, Northern Europe that, okay, work, 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 and maybe you will get a position in paradise. But as about what you said before about the abusive mm -hmm. father, and uh, I think I would don't, um, I cannot think of, uh, let's say, another Europe as a father, or I, I would say more like brothers, mm -hmm. brother or sister. Uh, I think that. Um, Due to all this, let's say, um, uh, neurosis over growth, over personal career way path, that I don't care about anybody else. I want. To, uh, I, I care only about my career. I'm going to step over dead bodies in order to achieve it. I don't care about anything. Mm -hmm. But we have memories. We have mm -hmm. memories within our common house, within Europe, of innovation, of art. Of, 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 of great uh, developments in, uh, in philosophy and in, uh, and in, uh, and in uh, sociology. And I think that this is what we should remind our, our, our roommates within our common house. Our common house is Europe. Mm -hmm. And we have, for, uh, and let's say, uh, this. And more and more, what you said that people, when you explain to people what is really actually happening, is putting them back again in reality. Oh my God, there are more important things uh, in life than outside the square meters of my house or of my work. And also, a lot of the people who believe in this religious way with the, all the depth discourse, let's call it that, like that, they don't know the sides of that. They. A lot of people just think that uh, Europe has given money to southern countries for free, just in exchange, in certain times you will give it back and that's fine. But and that's yeah. not true. Mm -hmm. the, all the loans that have been done were on a certain interest, were with some aims on that. It's not that right. it was just money that yeah. I g give you because you're poor and I'm solidar and I want to help you. No. But what about, yeah, because what about, because now when this is being discussed, right, I think that's one of the, the, the underlying, you see a struggle continually between, on the one hand, Europe trying to take on that role of parent, 
And then uh, somebody like Syriza trying to take on much more that position of being brothers, uh, of being equal. Do you really think Europe will accept you as equal? <laughs> to put it in uh, metaphorical terms, yeah. I think that what, what would it look, let's say, in a film or a book, you would say that um, the South has been, let's say, the brother who has gone out of rehab uh -huh. and is trying to convince the other brother who has been doing much more harm to himself and to his uh, family, mm -hmm. convince him that he it's acting wrong and it's uh, it's uh, it's it's going to uh, lead him to de to death uh, at some point. And unfortunately, now we are not, uh, that because of that background, let's say, mm -hmm. if you can call it, it's it's uh, difficult to change mind. But I think sooner or later, the ac uh, an accident will happen in the north, and they will realize, oh. Yeah, but what kind of, I mean, because then you hope for an accident in the north in no. order to achieve change. No, you don't hope for an no. accident okay. to happen. No, 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 but you but expect you, see, you wait. Because at the end it's the same kind of, of system. The periphery has suffered it first, but it's the same it, interests that are just pushing the economies on. We need to grow capitalist way, just keep growing, keep growing, it doesn't matter what the, what's the social conditions, we just want to be competitive. And this same scheme applies in Northern Europe, only at a different level. They haven't seen the worst consequences of it yet, but if we keep going, then at some point it will happen. We don't want, of course, we don't want yeah, that to happen. That's why we're here, to try to, I mean, to this, tell before mm -hmm. it happens and make a change before. Yeah, but dysfunctional people stay dysfunctional. They don't, uh, aren't, you, aren't you having a fantasy that, that uh, you know, Europe will understand yeah. its dysfunctionality, yeah, maybe. It's, you know. Usually it's through yeah. a harsh experience. Mm -hmm. That's at least my experience through, through life. Uh, the, mm -hmm. I've, be, I've become an, uh, to a completely other man. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, we. Uh, I do not. Uh, uh, on the one hand, you do not wish, let's say, uh, an accident in order to prove you right. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I was. Uh, you. I was foreseeing it before. Before the crisis in Greece, I can foresee it right now uh, in Europe. Uh, for example, in 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 the Netherlands, I I I, I find it. Uh, incomprehensible uh, the the system let's say of the minimum wage here between the young people and the older people mm -hmm. how is it working and how they expect this to to be sustainable and actually work and are not going to harm mm -hmm. um, its workforce but uh, or or something else we've been discussing about oh the uh, the Greeks and the Spanish have to pay and uh, okay we lend them all this money but nobody asks uh, what uh, what's the catch? All this money has go been going back to Germany and and, uh, and the Netherlands with high interest. They have, uh, 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 the South has been a, such a lubricant, mm -hmm. luc uh, lucrative uh, business, mm -hmm. and they do not. If you are so angry about the debts that you are giving, why you are not angry about the investors and your country that is not giving you one dime from? the tax money that you've been getting, and the interest that your country is gaining from all this. Or to the investor who yeah. risk, who gave this loan in such yes. a risk. Mm -hmm. Why don't the citizens ask their politicians, hey, why did mm -hmm. you lend money to this country if it was not a safe investment? Okay. No. Why, are, why are you doing that with my taxes? Where are the profits? But where are the profits? Where, where, where's the money from this? Exactly, but we know that people continue to, people invest deeply in their own self-deception, right? So if we take the stories you tell, right? So it's the profit of particular governments, particular economic interests. It's not necessarily to the profit of, of people in all kinds of ways, yet people persist in believing. But are you not setting yourself up too passively if you simply wait for the system, for the self-deception 
to collapse in some fashion, to burst, to have a crisis. Uh, and only then do you expect that the true perception will burst through? No, I think I think there is two possible solutions. One mm -hmm. would be saying, okay, you don't want to believe what I'm saying, then you stay here, I go on my own way, even when that way would be harder. Mm -hmm. But there is good ways, there is good things about being united. Not only economically, I see that Europe was a, a great project when it started from other point of view, like from my side, environmental aspects. Mm. For Spain, the, the the business of Europe, I think the balance is positive in the environmental point of view, for mm -hmm. example. So I see advantages of being together, and that's why we keep trying on convincing the other brother about, hey, realize this and let's make a change together. Mm -hmm. But yeah, of course, if that other brother keeps persisting in not believing, in not being actively uh, changing, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. the alternative is to go and, and I break. Think, yeah. I think that we as a part, we have done, let's say, moves to show another way, another uh, an, uh, an alternative to, to, to all this. And that, uh, 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 um, and how we can make this this home work uh, work better and not be in an endless cycle of uh, austerity, of pain, of uh, brutality, of all those things that we know at, the, at that point. And um, and of course the other part, the Northern Europe, is terrified of this cha uh, of this change. But actually, he doesn't want to succumb to let uh, it, uh, and it doesn't want to agree that this 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 alternative might actually work because it will crumble its whole world its whole theory it will lose its friend and its, its status mm -hmm. it is yeah. so clinked and there is consequences of mm -hmm. course of going differently all this competitive that uh, for a certain time some countries can uh, enjoy or can make a profit out by working in this system, they would need to to accept that things are not going to go that way. That mm -hmm. maybe if we want to live in a more social equality society, then we maybe wouldn't have so much money to live, to have two voca vacations a year mm -hmm. or to have two cars per family. Maybe in a equal society, just one car per family or even less mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Or no cars <laughs> is the solution, and of course, uh -huh. uh, if you are not through all the harsh aspects of this uh, system, then you don't want to give all these privileges for something that you are not really seeing happening yet. Okay, well, because I have a final question um, coming out of that, because it also it came up earlier that um, once Syriza came into power, it turned out to be much more difficult. I think than many people hoped, right? To achieve some of the goals that they had set, to uh, force Europe to renegotiate. So I wonder, you know, if you are looking at Greece, do you see hope? Do you see possibility? Or is it what you see is a fantasy? bumping into the hard reality of Europe's power? Well, I think in a way it is that. Of course, even the most dreamer person at the moment, if he still doesn't see that uh, just winning elections and then say we forget about the debt, if someone still believes that it can happen, then I'm sorry, but he should read more. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do see that uh, for a lot of quite realistic people, educated uh, or at least informed, uh, that seeing the example of uh, Greece is uh, a yeah, uh, uh, cold wash, we say in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cold shower. A shock yeah. of uh, cold water in the face. But we have to remember that uh, 
what they are doing to Greece is also an example to Spain. Don't go through this way because mm. then this will happen to you. And fortunately for Spain, Greece is a smaller economy where Europe can play with, let's mm. say. But I don't believe that uh, Europe will do the same thing to Spain because the, what they could lose is more. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we should keep in mind and be able to play with it because we do have better um, positions in certain aspects than Greece. So we need to play mm -hmm. our cards smartly. And for you, when you look at Spain, do you see possibility or do you see hard reality? Um, I see possibility, although I haven't been too much in, co uh, in contact to realize the f in a full scale what uh, um, is going on in Spain. Uh, I can I can relate to many austerity measures and everything that's happening, and let's say the will of the people for change, and. Um, I do see potential, and uh, as previously has been mentioned, I don't think that cities are, should be held fully accountable if uh, there are some disappointments, let's say, for potential failure of Podemos. Podemos has its own feet and its own strength to prove uh, things within the... Within there's also a lot of optimism uh, through, let's say, the latest uh, agreements and developments. Yes, it might not be perfect, but we have achieved at least not uh, to achieve, let's say, those surplus, uh, those uh, unimaginable surpluses that we've been asked, like of 4% or 3.5%. Mm -hmm. And uh, go uh, northern governments have been really reluctant of signing up that agreement a month ago with Greece. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't really satisfied. Mm -hmm. But, uh, of course, there has been criticism and people also in the letter have not been satisfied. But back for Spain, I do see potential. Yes, Syriza has, uh, can be, play, uh, be playing a role in that, but I think that um, uh, you can work even harder in order to create more a steady roots with the society. Uh, of course, the Indigados movement, as well as with the... Uh, you, you have come, uh, as I understand, more throughout this, uh, this movement, and not pre-existing, let's say, more deep, let's say, with traditional left or uh, these roots. And I think this is what is needed right now in order to be able to withstand the shocks of tomorrow. Can I add one question from the press? Uh, do you see any possible strategy of solidarity between the two countries? Because actually that comes like, okay, in Greece, one thing, in Spain, another. But I think there's a moment in which some strategies can be plot in... Definitely, definitely. And not just, uh, not just Spain and Greece. Tomorrow it's going to be uh, Ireland. It's going to be uh, um, it, 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 it might not be in a whole national level, but uh, you see collectives and societies and, and uh, unions being more aware and getting more participation. Even here in the Netherlands, there, there, there is something uh, sparking up, but I think that we are going to play a leading role and solidarity is really important in order to uh, keep up the pace and let's say coach <laughs> uh, the rest. Yeah, for in all the scenes I think from the social movements there is already quite solidarity going on from support it's maybe not a very actual support in the street but there is support in the social media in the press, in the all kind of uh, information uh, websites or whatever. But uh, also in the political scene at the moment, Syriza uh, and Podemos are together in the, par in the European Parliament in a block yes. together with other parties of Europe. So I do see place for solidarity and I think it's happening already.
at a certain level. But I'm pretty amazed how, from in a really short of time, how we managed to become to to go in one. Uh, um, into the same side, let's say, through the European, uh, uh, the party of uh, European left. And uh, yes, how, how your party, which doesn't have any traditional link, uh, links to the left, with us who are really rooting back uh, eons ago, you show, let's say, thinking out of the box, but still, Re uh, remaining, let's say, on the left side, uh, on the left side, on the, I do, uh, I do know, let's say, the reluctancy of name, calling left or right or center, mm -hmm. but uh, on my point of view, these uh, these are terms that uh, they apply still today, and they. The risk is that this uh, <laughs> concept have have been uh, cheated too know. many times in Europe, I guess. So it's risky to use them, and also for the strategic point of view as a big party with such a political strategy as Podemos, then using certain words is maybe not the most smart way. But definitely, I think more, a lot of people can agree that uh, most of politics uh, of uh, policies that uh, Podemos would apply would belong to what traditionally we call left, mm. definitely. Okay, well, uh, we'll be picking up next time, right where we've left off. Uh, time is up. So, uh, I want to thank you for today. Mm -hmm. And uh, you. we'll be ending here. Uh, there's one final dream. When we wake up in this dream, it seems like we're on a subway. We're traveling fast. It's unclear where. It's unclear if we're going underground or through the night, but you can feel it rattling, shaking. It's going very fast. There are television screens, there are computers all around you. You're watching them. You're sitting there. There's a man on the screen. He's talking, but you can't hear what he's saying. Suddenly, the screen gets bigger. There's more. It's hard to look away. And you look down, you can feel it, you're strapped into your seat. You haven't strapped yourself in, and yet, as if there is a seatbelt on the subway, you're stuck. We ourselves become the screen. The screen talks. We know somehow also that there are other subways also hurtling through the night. But we ourselves are on this rail, and it's going very fast. We dream as we live. We live as we dream. You cannot tell which is which. But change one, and you just might change the other. Thank you. Thank you.